What's good, y'all? Your boy Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out John Cena hated working with these wrestlers. Now I'm really interested to check this out because you know John Cena seems like a good guy, you know, lovable, you know. A lot of people like John Cena, you know, so it's very interesting for you to get under John Cena's skin and he don't want to work with you in the business. So we gotta see who exactly would uh these individuals be. Appreciate all the love and support y'all uh have shown on the channel. Let's get right into it, man. John Cena might have a reputation as WWE's golden boy, but don't let that fool you. He's no stranger to stirring the pot backstage, mm. and there are plenty of people that he just can't stand. The doctor of thugonomics has even derailed a few careers in the process yes, he just because he didn't like them. And sometimes he just couldn't stand the person he had to share the locker room with. Take Alex Riley for example, oh, yeah. he was a promising young star in WWE who got yeah. his start on the main roster via NXT. He had charisma, a good work ethic and bags of potential. The yeah. fans seemed to like him too, especially after he split up from The Miz and went solo. Mm -hmm. But Riley's career took a sudden and steep nosedive and the story behind it points directly to his relationship with John Cena. Yeah, I remember hearing Riley about this. Riley himself has admitted that there was something about him that Cena didn't like. I just happened to be in a situation where, right from the start, it was just, he didn't like me. I just don't think he did. I tried to change that the best I could. I worked very hard and tried to do the best I could to grow and learn and fit in in the way a wrestler fits in and he wanted me to fit in, it just kind of got to the point where even some of the other guys would kind of be like, what's up with that? Despite mm. Riley's best efforts to make friends with Cena, things ended up getting even worse. While Riley has kept the details vague, he did mention that there was a confrontation with Cena that basically ruined his career Damn. going forward. There was an incident, and it certainly changed the path of my career. I don't want to discuss it right now, but I will, one day for sure. It was a tough situation at times. I guess we can leave it at that. Damn. And honestly, I struggle with the morality of even talking about it, and I'm not into blowing up anybody else at this point. I will address it one day for sure. You don't want to know. It was a tough situation. The fuck happened? What followed that mystery issue backstage was a slow and painful decline for Riley yeah. on the WWE roster. After not being used for several months, he briefly popped back up on NXT before being released from his contract. Backstage reports have suggested that Cena used his influence to keep Riley down. Ryback also oh, brought damn. up that mystery behind the scenes situation that Riley is keeping to himself in a recent interview. Cena's been a piece of to me since day one. I was nothing but nice and respectful to him. I don't know Alex Riley just came out and admitted he had issues with Cena. And when people hear what really happened with that, they're going to lose their shit. I have a pretty good idea of what happened with that and the guys in WWE. And one, it's f***ing hilarious. And two, it's hilarious what people will find out about mm. John. Ryback went on to say that he thought Cena was a poison that held people back, the people that he deemed to be a threat to him. And that also seemed to extend to threats in his personal life too. Take Mickie James and Kenny Dykstra for example. They were in a serious relationship during their time in WWE, with some reports suggesting that they were even engaged. However, things took a dark I think turn I know about when this one Dykstra too. discovered that Mickey was cheating on him with none other yeah, than John I remember Cena. Hearing about this too. And after Dykstra confronted Mickey about this, she broke down and confessed the relationship. And he since claimed that his career suffered badly as a result of this entire situation. Damn. Despite being technically the victim, he yeah. was moved away from the Raw roster and placed over on SmackDown, mm -hmm. which was away from where Cena and Mickey were yep. based at the time. And on SmackDown, they hardly bothered to use him. His career took a massive downturn and never recovered. And he was eventually released from the company 
in 2008. That's cold when you find out something like that. And because John was the top guy, there's like, yep, so we can avoid all types of issues. We're just going to move you to SmackDown. Then you get moved to SmackDown and they don't use you. And then they release you. That's fucked up, bro. Right. He has since suggested that Cena was the one to use his influence to get him moved over to the SmackDown brand. Mickey James, meanwhile, didn't fare much better in the long run in a massive case of what goes around comes around. After the end of her relationship with Cena, she too was moved away from him onto the mm -hmm. SmackDown brand in 2009. The rumours suggest that she was unable to cope with the breakup backstage and Cena just didn't need the hassle at the time. And just as Mickey James and Kenny Dykstra's careers took a sharp downturn after their personal issues with Cena, Wade uh, Barrett's yeah. rise to the top was quickly stamped out too when the men didn't get along with each other, showing how Cena's influence behind the scenes could derail even the most promising of careers. Mm -hmm. As the leader of the Nexus, Barrett seemed destined for the main event, but then came SummerSlam 2010, where everything changed. The original plan was for the Nexus to defeat Team Cena in the main event, which would have cemented their place as the top heels in the company. Yes. And Barrett, as the leader, would have been on the top of that mountain. However, that never happened, and Barrett himself has speculated that it was Cena that got the outcome of the match changed. Mm -hmm. Instead of having Barrett and his boys run roughshod over Team Cena, he ended up single-handedly defeating <laughs> yeah. the remaining members of the Nexus that himself. Wild, Barrett has admitted that he and Cena weren't friends at the time. Yeah. Then there are guys like John Cena who I don't get along with. It just so happens that he's not a personality that I get on with very well, in or out of the ring. Barrett did end up having a singles feud with Cena, but that resulted in him getting literally buried on pay-per-view. Yeah. And the victims of the chain gang soldier just keep on piling <laughs> up. <laughs> That's Chris was Masters was initially given a solid push with his undefeated streak. Mm -hmm. WWE seemed to be setting him up as a future main eventer when they put him in a program with WWE champion John Cena but behind the scenes, things weren't running as smoothly. Masters and Cena never clicked either personally or in the ring, and this lack of chemistry would be a big problem for Masters' future prospects. Cena's influence meant that his feud with Masters was cut short, mm. and he never managed to reach much more than mid-card status in WWE. Mr. Kennedy had one mm. of the sharpest career declines in wrestling history. Definitely did. He had charisma, mic skills, and a decent in-ring ability, and WWE seemed ready to strap the proverbial rocket to him. In 2007, Kennedy won the Money in the Bank briefcase at WrestleMania. He was almost guaranteed to become a future WWE champion, mm -hmm. and there were plans for him to be revealed as Mr. McMahon's Man. illegitimate son yep. in a major storyline. All of this would have catapulted him to into the main mode. event picture. However, things quickly went south. Kennedy suffered an injury that forced him to give up the briefcase, yep. and then he was implicated in a drug scandal. The final nail in the coffin was the suggestion that he was unsafe to work within the ring. Mm -hmm. Who was making that suggestion backstage? Well, it was the duo of Randy <laughs> yep. Orton and John <laughs> Cena. It was during a 10-man tag team match on Raw where Kennedy hit a back suplex on Orton. Orton landed awkwardly on his bad shoulder and was very angry yeah. about it. After the show went off the air, Orton stormed to the back in order to discuss the situation with Vince. According to Kennedy himself, Cena was there too, and he backed Orton up. Mm. But it turns out that Cena had been waiting since 2007 for the perfect moment to drop Kennedy in the shit. The men had worked together back then, and Kennedy was accused of encouraging fans to boo Cena just at that time when the fans were turning against him, as WWE were desperately trying to get Cena over as their main base. 
I mean, he's a heel. So he, I, I get it, but he's a heel. So he, he, he should be like, you should boo this guy. This guy sucks. He's a bad guy. He's not supposed to be like, y'all should cheer him. No. I get, they were really desperate trying to get this guy over around that time, but he was losing the fans. But I, I'm, that's the reason. That's kind of a shallow ass reason. Babyface, it was a terrible thing for him to do. But as we know, there were plenty of times when the fans booed Cena, yeah. despite him supposedly being the babyface. For example, his feud with The Rock. Yes, the men had an on-screen rivalry that led to a match at WrestleMania, but there was real-life heat mm -hmm. between the men. It all started during the period when Rocky had gone off to Hollywood and he hadn't yet returned to WWE. In 2010, Cena went on the record to register his disgust yep. with the Brahma Bull. At one point, The Rock loved wrestling and wanted to do this his whole life. Then explain to me why he can't come back for an anniversary show, why he can't make an appearance at WrestleMania. Simply put, it's because he wants to be an actor. And there's nothing wrong with that. He's a very good actor. He's very successful. He's done very well for himself and associating with sports entertainment doesn't do much for his acting career, so I get why he doesn't come back. Just don't f*** me around and tell me that you love wrestling when you're just doing it to do something else. That's the only thing that gets me really pissed off. It's just very ironic that <laughs> the tables have turned with John Cena now. He's 2011. Mm -hmm. They did manage to have a professional relationship with each other, considering that he's following in the Rock's footsteps of leaving wrestling for Hollywood. Various people have called him out about his hypocrisy yeah. over the last couple of years. And to say that he's had to do some serious backpedaling yeah. would be an understatement. Uh publicly and personally to Dwayne Johnson, I've stated that uh, although I thought I was trying to do what's best for business, I went about it the wrong way. I violated his trust and uh, I made allegations about his perspective that I knew nothing about. And deep down, I was a fan. I wanted the rock back. You know, I wanted to do anything to get the rock back. But I did it the wrong way. I didn't do it the respectful way. So mm -hmm. I had to eat a little bit of crow. I had to say I'm sorry and I was wrong because I am sorry and I was wrong. And that's yeah. a very humbling that's a very humbling experience. He okay, was Cena, apology accepted. Now let's get an apology for all the other people you allegedly fucked over backstage for all those years. Mm. We probably won't ever get that apology, man. This was a great video, stunned by wrestling. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a like, and y'all should subscribe to them. Um, they make some dope wrestling-related uh, content videos, and um, most of these I actually uh, heard about um it's just the alex riley situation we still don't know exactly what 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 happened and we may never know but it's just it's one of those things where he's human he makes mistakes just like anybody else and politicking is one of those things that a lot don't get it twisted a lot of wrestlers some of your favorite wrestlers do this whether it's right or wrong that's subjective but a lot of wrestlers do this. They a lot of wrestlers do politicking. You don't think wrestlers still don't do politicking now? Oh yeah, I'm willing to bet they do. Especially if someone's at the top and they don't like you. What? Oh, they can let it be known they don't like you and do whatever it, they can to make sure that you're not successful in the company. So, but yeah, it's it's really unfortunate, and I'm willing to bet. John Cena is not the same person he was 10 plus years ago. And I don't know if he's had conversations with these individuals and they've buried the hatchet off camera, you know, you know, behind the scenes, because not everything needs to be publicized for us uh, fans to view. So we don't know. Maybe he has, maybe he hasn't. But, you know, hopefully he was able to mend some of these situations behind the scenes. But comment down below. Let me know some other wrestling related videos y'all want me to check out. Appreciate all the love and support y'all showing on the channel. Road to 150k. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See y'all next one. Peace.